Welcome to a new episode of Ausfa TV with me, your host, Mr. Z. Welcome, you flower power kids from the sixth generation. Today we're going to present you in our in-depth review the newest generation of the Volkswagen Transporter. Yes, it's called Transporter in German. Uh, the first one was built, by the way, in 1950. And over the years, in the last 65 years, and in between the last fifth, five generations, the car was sold or the MPV was sold over 12 million times. The last generation, which we call the T5, was sold uh, f two million times. And uh, you got to know that, at least in Germany, the Volkswagen Bully, that's how we call it, you know, it's like a nickname, the Bully, uh, used to be... Um, commercial vehicle in the, f in the very beginning. The multivan, the car we know for tr personal transportation, for person transportation, is just 30 years old. So um, on one hand we have the commercial vehicles, on the other hand we have the vehicles for uh, person transportation and overall we have a um, travel mobile called California to round up the product range. So we have three different branches of the transporter. First of all we have the commercial vehicles, then we have the um, shuttle vehicles for person transportation and the third branch is uh, the camper mobile. Well the first three generation had the engine in the rear and the back Uh, the starting with the fourth generation, the engine is in the front, so as well for the sixth generation. For the market start, Volkswagen offers four different uh, diesel engines and two gasoline engines. The diesel engines have 84, 102, 150 or 204 horsepower and the gasoline engines come with 150 or 204 horsepower. The so Volkswagen Multivan always comes with front wheel drive uh, as a factory setting, uh, but you can choose all wheel drive, which is called full motion uh, with Volkswagen, for all engines. Depending on the engine, you have the choice between a manual 5 speed or a manual 6 speed or the 7 uh, speed DSG automatic transmission. I won't touch the engine because it's still hot, but we have here the 2 liter TDI engine with 150 horsepower. It's good for maximum torque of 340 newton meter and you get them in a range between 1500 and 3000 rpm. Let me give you the basic facts about this car, about the 2 liter TDI with 150 horsepower and I'm not mean that you can turn the seats. Acceleration from 0 to 100 kilometers per hour or 62 miles per hour in 10.1 seconds and the top speed is reached with 199 kilometers per hour which equals 124 miles per hour. The gas tank of the new Volkswagen Multivan is good for 80 liters or 21.2 gallons. Volkswagen claims a fuel consumption of 6.6 liters on 100 kilometers or 35.6 miles per gallon, which means that under perfect conditions you can drive up to 1,210 kilometers or 750 miles without getting gas. The T6 has a length of 4.9 meters, which equals 193 inches, with a wheelbase, at least our model, of 3 meters, which equals 180 inches. Its height is 1.97 meters, which equals 78 inches, and it is from mirror tip to mirror tip 2.29 meters wide, which equals 90 inches. As of the turn radius, you need at least 11.9 meters of free space, which equals 469 inches. The curb weight is 
2180 kilograms or 4806 pound. The admissible total weight is 3080 kilograms, which equals 6790 pound. At least in Germany, the Volkswagen Multivan comes in three different option lines as uh, the basis version is the trend line, the comfort line comes next, and the highest is the high line, as the name says. And the high line comes with two sliding doors on the sides. Um, the design didn't change too much, at least that's what we think, especially from the front. Something new are the LED um, headlights with a, a daylight day running light in LED technique. That's optional, you get the normal halogen um, beams as well. That's the basic setting. Besides that, we're driving uh, um, a special edition, the Generation 6 edition, which is available at least in Germany for the market start. And this one comes with the LED headlights. This, at least I think, beautiful 18-inch um, um, alloy wheels called disc, the color and the privacy uh, setting for the windows. At least in Germany, the multivan or the transporter will be available in 17 different colors. Plus, for the Generation 6, we have four dual color tones, like here, Sherry Red and Candy White. And in between those two colors, you find um, a new shadow line that they have uh, implemented in the design to separate it from the T5. Um, our car, I mentioned it already, stands on 18-inch alloy wheels. Uh, the basis model comes with 16-inch steel rims and you have the options between 16, 17 and 18-inch alloys. You get the multivan with two different uh, wheelbase sizes. The small one is just three meters long, and the large one is three meters and 40 centimeters, which means that the car is either four, four meters and 90 centimeters or five meter and 30 centimeters long. And you can, um, well, we have the short wheelbase and you recognize it. If the door stops right in front of the wheels, that's a short version. Otherwise you will have some more car behind the door. And what I like to point out is that once you open the sliding door here, you have one meter to enter the back of the car. There's not much to say about the back. The shadow line that comes from the side goes down over the rear lights and goes all the way across the car as well. So we have the two-tone uh, paint as well. And by the way, if you have LED in the front, you have LED in the back as well. The Generation 6 comes with a neat interior feature and let me show you around the interior. Toby just asked me, are you getting old? Well, I am old, so I'm very happy to have this handle to be able <laughs> to climb into the car. But overall, you can just scoot your but on the seat, the door opens around 70 degree. I have to lean out to grab the handle and close the door. Welcome in the interior of this beautiful car. Ha <laughs> ha! Um, the dashboard is separated in four sections. We have the first section, hard plastics by the way. The second section, uh, which is painted in the exterior color, this cherry red. The third section is here with application, um, you know, look-alike brushed alloy. And the fourth section is down here with hard plastics again, a little bit softer at this um, thing here. On the door, in the door, where I'll leave my arm resting while I'm driving, of course not, I have both hands on the steering wheel. It's soft touch again, and down here we have textile. So everything feels good. It, it's, um, nothing feels cheap, and you have the idea that you bought a car that is really uh, good quality. Um, 
I have lots of space. Uh, well, it's a huge car, so I should have lots of space. So nothing is tied towards my passenger. I have lots of headroom and I can sit here all comfortable. I have no problems with that. Um, talking about reaching everything, it's a Volkswagen overall, so you have everything here on the side. You have a little buttons right there that you can easily reach as a, as a driver. One thing I don't like about all this is the display or the whole infotainment system. It's just, you know, it's facing the ceiling, which I don't understand, and it's not facing me at all, so that's a little bit disturbing, but at least while we were driving, we had no problems with the sun disturbing the picture in any way. Let me start with my normal routine now. I will show you the length of the seat belt, so even bigger people can buckle up easily, and you can adjust the height of the seat belts on your shoulder as well. We have the special seats uh, that you can adjust electrically all the way. And you can heat them up even with three uh, intensities. Uh, the regular seats, of course, don't have this electric ad adjustment. And as well, I have uh, something for my lumbar, I think. So for the back, a little cushion that you can blow up and move up and down. Um, the seats, by the way, have two armrests. On each side there's one armrest, and I like this. You can adjust the height of the armrest with this little wheel here. And um, depending on what the purpose of your car is, you can order the seats with textile, um, artificial leather, so plastics overall, um, Alcantara, that's the w version we have, or real leather. The steering wheel is covered with real leather and I like the Volkswagen steering wheels a lot. You can adjust it manually. It could come out a little bit more for me. And by the way, I don't know if you remember the generation T1, T2 or T3. The steering wheel was more, you, you could like lay on the steering wheel. With the fourth generation, they started building the steering wheel like in a, a normal regular sedan, well, normal car. Uh, however, I still have this little feeling that still gives me, you know, this antique bully feeling. Next is the the mirrors. They have all almost square shaped. You see everything you need, and even if you back up, you have a good idea where your car ends. So those help a lot while parking. The inner mirror, however, is way too small. You hardly see the full uh, rear window. Actually, you have to move your head to see everything. This should be much bigger for my taste, at least. Uh, talking about backing up or parking the car or just, you know, tiny roads, you can order a rear camera as well. The picture is not too clear, but it helps you backing up. And um, I think it's kind of sad, you know, normally you have the lines when you move the steering wheel, you see where you probably go. This is just missing here. All you have are lines to measure the um, distance to whatever. Yeah, if I turn my head around here, I have no problems with a blind spot on the left side. And on the right side, it's kind of funny, you know, here the B pillar is not too big. On the right side, I would even say it is much bigger. However, it's not too big to have really a blind spot. And going uh, in the back, the C pillar and even the D, uh, A, B, C, D, the D pillar is not even really huge. So I don't think that you have really problems with blind spots while you drive. Um, behind the steering wheel, we have the round gauges, classical uh, um, Volkswagen style. On the left side, the RPM meter going up to 6,000 RPM. The red range starts at 5,000 RPM. And on the right side, the speedometer up to 240 kilometers per hour, uh, while this car just drives 199. Inside the RPM meter, we find the temperature control, and inside the uh, speedometer, there's the gauge for the diesel tank. In between the both round gauges, we have a display of the board computer, which size is around uh, 5 eighths of an iPhone display. 
and here we have the buttons to navigate through the system. Oh, I didn't mention it. The steering wheel is uh, not only coated with leather, it's a multifunctional steering wheel. On the left side, you have all the buttons to control the ACC, the adaptive cruise control, and even the volume of the car, uh, of the infotainment system. On the right side, you can uh, pick up calls when your phone is hooked to the infotainment system or use uh, speech control and you have all the controls to use a board computer and even down here two buttons to skip songs or change the radio stations. So when I um, switch through the board computer I have all the values that are interesting for me besides that. Uh, I can control or see what, what audio is playing, uh, the next things of uh, uh, sets of instructions for from the navigation system in case you are navigating somewhere. Uh, you see everything from the phone. You can control which assist system you want to use and which you don't want to use. And you have some settings that you can control over this little display as well and the buttons right here on the steering wheel. Alright, the gauges you can read easily during daytime as well as during nighttime. I know because I've driven a bunch of uh, Volkswagen in the last weeks, months. Um, I had no problems reading the display from the navigation system as well. I kind of dislike that it's so small, it's just uh, 6.3 uh, inches. Uh, and as I said, it's facing something, but not me. However, you can read it good and everything is clear in, 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 in focus. Um, we don't have a real ambient light, but some light is glowing here in the inside while you drive during nighttime, which we can show you because we are in Sweden and uh, during summer uh, the sun goes down about midnight and we have to leave the car already at 6 p.m. So no way that we can film in the dark. Um, Besides that, uh, we, we don't have a panoramic sunroof or anything and I'm not honking the horn today because we stand here in a bunch of uh, some uh, fishing men who try to fish here in uh, Sweden and I don't want to, you know, make them upset. Alright, it's time for me to show you all the compartments in here and we have quite a few in the door. Down there we have a huge compartment and you can probably store there two liter bottles easily but you have to reach down very much so they put another compartment in the door up here and we have even space for half a liter bottle that fits in here easily and you still have a lot of space for anything else. Very next to the driver uh, to the seat is another small compartment. Well, I think at least there's space for a warning vest. I wouldn't store anything in there that is important because I would be afraid that it would fall out if I leave the car. Uh, in the dashboard we have a huge compartment. I put my iPhone here and shades and there's still a lot of space. It's uh, coated with textile inside. Going down we have the first compartment here, there's some candy bars and see they're this big and they fit in all the way. Next to this well we have an anti-slip surface in here as well as in here in the, the upper compartment in the door panel. Uh, we have a 12 volt outlet, uh, the USB outlet or one USB outlet that is able to reach the infotainment system. Below we have a, a drawer and inside the drawer there's a compartment, it's all anti-slip as well and we have two cup holders but just small cup holders so uh, everything bigger than this would not really fit in here and we have no things to control the distance so only this size of bottles will fit in here. And in the very front we have another little compartment and this is anti-slip as well for probably coins or a pen or whatever. Below this drawer we have another flap that opens and I think it's good for a liter bottle and I was told you can even cool it down with the air condition. But you can only stick it in and have to leave it open and you can't uh, 
close it with a bottle inside. And I would like to point out, I'm a huge Mercedes fan, you all know that. I'm a fan of the Mercedes V-Class as well, but I have to say, Volkswagen did a much better job concerning the compartments, because uh, in the Mercedes V-Class I had to reach down every time I wanted something, reach down, reach down. And here I have everything in reach even while driving with no problem, and I like that. I'm not done yet. Uh, we have uh, another compartment here behind this painted uh, section. And here we have another USB plug and the AUX in line in. And some space for, yeah, just some stuff. And here's the classical gloves compartment, which is not really big, but at least so stuff fits in there and you can cool it down. Doesn't really make sense for me that you can cool it down because it's so small. And by the way, there's a pen holder as well. Um, we have sunshades, of course, on both sides. They could be a little bit bigger for my taste, I guess. And even the makeup mirror could be bigger. And <laughs> the illumination here, the little light to illum illuminate me while I'm looking in the mirror could be much brighter. It's not LED. And here's a document holder, ticket holder, whatever. We have door handles, not only on both sides here, but four more in the back. And I've already showed you we have those handles to get easier in the car, not only on the driver's side, but as well on the passenger side. Then we have reading lights for the driver, for the passenger, or if I want to have the full light, the whole thing lightens up. Not LED as well, but once I hit all the lights, all the lights in the back go, uh, turn on as well. Also. And I think that's pretty much it from the interior in the front. Okay, let me jump inside in the back. First of all, we have this sliding door right here. As an option, it opens all automatically, electrically. In our version, we are just YouTubers. Um, you have to do the job yourself, but when you close it, I'm just doing it really slowly. Then we have an engine right here that helps closing the door. At least you have a little support so you don't have to slam the door. Well, jumping inside is easy. I have a handle here that eases me getting in. There's a little light right there to illuminate the entry. And if I jump on here, I can easily look on the roof and if I have something on the roof I can easily load and uh, unload it. So I have to bend my head a little bit and I'm walking in the very back and so I'm sitting here on the bench. The bench has places for three persons, three grown-ups by the way, because I can sit on this side as well as in the middle as well as um, on the left side. Only the two seats on the sides have Isofix um, hooks. And what I don't like too much, well, first of all, I think it's pretty clever that you have the belts on the outside. So there's this long, long enough to buckle up a child seat or baby shelf. And you buckle up to the right. So even if you sit in the middle, no one is ha have to touch your, your butt to buckle up. But the uh, locks of the doorbells are not really stable, so kids might have problems buckling up themselves. By the way, the seats are not formed out in any way. Still, they feel really comfortable. I have enough headspace, and I even have a little armrest here in the side. You can um, adjust. No, first of all, I will show you the armrest. The armrest. I mean, this is American style, right? You can put like three arms on here. So that's pretty neat and easy. I have no idea really to how to put it in here. Okay, the bench. You can open this little drawer here and then you have a, a leash. And once you pull the leash, so the bench is released and you can pull it forward and backward really easily. And as you see, I'm not really a, a really strong guy and I have no problems moving the whole thing back and forward. So you can adjust 
if you need more space in the front, so for the passengers, or if you need more space for the trunk. Okay, uh, besides that, uh, we have a privacy toned uh, uh, windows here, and as well for all the windows, you have uh, another form of privacy, blinds, or uh, sun protection, which is kind of neat. We have handles on both sides with a little hook for your jacket, and um, at least we have reading lights. You can adjust them to the front or to the back. Those big lights that you see here are the normal entry lights. And we have air outlets, uh, three pieces up here. I will show you the other part a little bit later. Uh, a quick walk through the compartments in the back and there's plenty to say. Uh, right behind the tires or in front of the tires, on the left side we have three cup holders, two for big bottles and one for smaller bottles on this side. On the right side there's just one huge um, bottle holder, I think for two liter bottles with spacers, so maybe even one and a half liter will fit in here. And here's a 12 volt outlet as well. We have hooks to tie up things here at the bottom, and on this side, since there's the door, we have uh, quite a few other compartments. Here are two cup holders and something that I would call ashtray, even it's not an ashtray, of course, because we, don't all, we all don't smoke anymore. Then we have a pretty big table, so I could use my... Um, notebook on here, my MacBook with ease, right? Uh, uh, I couldn't really sit this way on the table, but I can easily scoot forward the whole bench, so I'll be fine with that. Next to this we find another cup holder with two cup holders, or with two bottle holders at least, for this size, and there's another compartment. I would call this a little dustbin something. And next to this is another huge compartment for whatever else. And since we only, ha only have one sliding door as an option, you get it for the other side as well. Down in this part we have another huge compartment for all kinds of stuff and you can even store two more bottles in the back. So let me jump on the single seats here and one of the two single seats. I can adjust the backrest um, or I can even fold down the seat completely. Oopsie. I have the option on the back to pull a handle and then I can scoot the uh, seat back and forward. And in the front I have a little hook as well. And if I pull it I can adjust the seats and turn them 180 degree or even 360. Um, the locks of the safety belts are stable here. I have two armrests, each on one side. And here I have little screws to adjust the height of the armrest as well. I could even show you the length of the seat belts. And even here it's long enough to hook up baby shelves. And we have Isofix hooks on both of the seats as well. Looking up, just want to see, this goes back a little bit more. Uh, we have the same set of fans or air outlets and lights and reading lights here. And in the center we have the controls for the uh, air condition. So we have a three zone air condition, driver, passenger and the very back here. You can order your multivan with an electric back door. Ours is, of course, since we're just YouTubers, uh, it's just uh, mechanically. So we don't have a um, switch in the front and on the key there is a button, but this just unlocks the door. It, not, it doesn't open it. So, um, by the way, here's the key. You like to see it. A regular Volkswagen key and you can snap it in and out. And this other thing is just for uh, the heating system. However, I don't need this anymore and I will open the trunk or the, the back door. What I was going to say is I learned from Volkswagen 
that you can use the logo as a badge to open the trunk. Nope. So I'm reaching down here and here's just the rear camera and it's not protected in any way. So I'm start grabbing on the camera in order to find the switch. The switch is down here and here it opens and it opens pretty easy as well and gives me the view in the trunk and our tripod case fits in here pretty easy. Um, and if I want to lift it inside, it's like 57 centimeters up, so that's not really a lot. Um, the bench is at the very back position right now. And here I have little um, flaps that I can remove and have this uh, thingies here, those uh, drawers as well, access, the same access like on the front. And I have leashes here. And leash number two is for moving the whole thing and I put it to the very front. Once I have it in the very front, I have up to 30, uh, 85 centimeters. By the way, in width we have um, 1 meter and 22 centimeters of space. And when I have pushed it forward a little bit, I can reach this compartment here and here's a warning triangle and the midi pack. Um, besides that, we have some stuff in here. We have um, little lights for the trunk on both sides. On the right side, we have a 12 volt outlet as well. We have hooks to tie up things two, two times here. And um, we have another hook up here, probably for your jacket and s or something else. I'm very sorry we didn't find a real value uh, how much space you have in the trunk. Once you remove all the seats and you can remove the, uh, them, but I don't know how, and they didn't leave us a manual in the car so we didn't do it, um, you have up to 5.8 square meters, no, cubic meters of space inside the car and depending on which car you choose, uh, which wheelbase and you get higher roofs as well, it's going up to a volumina of 9.3 cubic meters. Um, you can store up to 900 kilograms inside the multivan and 100 kilograms of them go on the roof if you want to. And by the way, this back door, it looks huge, but it's really, really easy to close. Feels really light. Uh, if you have the need, you can put a hook on the car for trailers and you can pull trailers up to 2.5 tons. Well, let me sum up my driving experience here with a new 2015 Volkswagen Multivan T6. We do have the 150 horsepower uh, TDI in the car and I think it's enough power to just drive fine. Uh, we're in Sweden right now, the top speed limit is 130 kilometers uh, per hour and we didn't go f uh, faster of course. Um, so I can just give you feedback to this um, speed and uh, talk is thinking about wind noises. This is pretty much a box car so you hang with a box in the wind and I was pretty amazed that at least until 130 kilometers per hour, you hardly hear wind noises. Uh, but you do hear the car, the engine, um, the pavement, you know, through the, the tires. And it's not like really a silent, silent runner. But even with 130 kilometers per hour, you can have a nice conversation with a passenger. And uh, at least the passengers in the back can hear you because of this voice amplification uh, system that is built in. We tried this out. Toby was sitting in the back for a while. And um, he said it could be even a little bit louder. The funny part is, he sings sitting in the back, it could be louder, while me sitting in the front, I hear my echo. And that's kind of funny, you know? So I think maybe in the next generation they can fine tune the system or even with a running production they could fine tune the whole system a little bit, give a little bit more power uh, of volume in the back. Um, we have the DCC, the dynamic chassis control system here. So you have three different modes, comfort, normal, sport. And I was kind of disappointed that I 
don't really feel much difference between the three uh, settings. And I was told by an expert from Volkswagen, well, yeah, the thing is, you have this nice 18-inch alloy wheels on the car. If you would have 16-inch, you would feel much more difference. So from my point of view right now, I would say, well, I don't need the system once I order the 18-inch uh, rims, and especially those disc um, alloys. I think they're pretty sexy with this retro design, mirroring. Um, however, in the comfort setting, and I was driving like a 90% in the comfort setting, I tried the sport setting, didn't do much difference, so I sticked in the comfort setting. This car is pretty comfortable. It takes a lot of the potholes away from you. And in com uh, conjunction with the seats, uh, I think the, the multivan is even a comfortable runner. Uh, we have the seven speed DSG is a dual clutch and I can't tell you anything about it. It just works with charm. That's all I can say. Um, I never felt the need to put it in manual and I didn't drive much in sport either. Yeah, if you put it in sport, it's a little bit more, you know, the throttle gives you more feedback, uh, accelerates the car a little bit faster. But overall, this is not a race car, it's an MPV or a minibus. So you gotta be fine with a normal setting, I guess. Overall, you do a rather long distance or city driving than speeding on the Autobahn or a highway. Um, I was really amazed how easy you can maneuver the whole car. Like think about parking in the city or just backing up somewhere. Since we have this box design and those really nice and big mirrors on the right, left and right side, it's so easy to drive backwards with the car because you see where the car ends. You get a really good feeling very fast and um, so it's fun and easy to drive. Uh, talking about fun, this is not a sports car, but if you like vans or MPVs or minibuses, um, you know what I'm talking about in terms of driving fun, and I think this car is fun to drive. The multivan is fun to drive, because you sit a little bit higher, you have this almost truck feeling, but you're driving not a truck, and um, yeah, I, I think it's quite fun. Volkswagen put in three assist systems in our car. We have uh, a side assist, so the blind spot warner, which has like a little like a lamps glowing in the case of the uh, mirror. And I would like to have it a little bit more brighter. Once, once it wants your traffic in the blind spot and you put the turning signal in this direction, it starts flashing. But even this is not bright enough for my taste. They should put some, some other stuff in there so you get a brighter thing. Especially I just drove the Turan and this one was, you know, the same function, much brighter, uh, much better warning. We have the ACC in the car, so adaptive cruise control. It holds the distance to the car in front of you. So if you say, I want to go 100, put cruise control on and then the guy in front of you is slowing down to 90 80 your car you know keeps the distance and slowing down as well uh, besides that we have a front assist so the car slows down immediately once you don't see something coming coming on uh, if you don't recognize something it does an emergency brake and uh, we have like, you know, this assist that keeps all the system data together and analyzes it uh, and tells you, well, you're not paying enough attention uh, to the street, so you might want to take a stop or have a coffee or whatever. Uh, we have the um, new composition media system in here. I don't know the exact name, I'm sorry. Actually, it's pretty much like the Discover Pro and uh, you get now uh, all the uh, Apple CarPlay support as well as Android Auto and MirrorLink. So this car is now able uh, to be hooked up with all the different smartphones there are. And you can control the smartphone over the display of the infotainment system, which I think it's a good thing, especially since you can reach it easily. All I can say is uh, the display could be a little bit more, uh, could be a little bit bigger, especially in this big car. 
and uh, the position could be facing me a little bit more and I don't like it to be facing you know to the ceiling the speakers are fine you know fine for listening to radio music um, you know put some some stuff on for your kids but if you're like really into music then you might be disappointed it's it's a fair system it's not bad it's not good it's just okay but okay is most likely okay isn't it uh, one thing I want to add, Volkswagen is offering for all their cars uh, lane keeping assist and active lane keeping assist and you can't order it for the multivan and I think that's pretty sad. I hope they will offer this as a feature later on while the production started. Before I talk about the car guys, I have to tell you Stockholm was just amazing. We had beautiful weather even with some rain in between, but yesterday night at midnight we still had a sunset and then when I was going to bed at one, one o'clock in the morning we still had the same sunset so for me in summertime this is a city of the never-ending sunset and if you look at this car we have red here and white there reminds me still of the sunset I enjoyed so much last night but you want to hear more about the car my sum up about the new Volkswagen Multivan T6 uh, all the commercial vehicle manufacturers like to hear, hey, it drives like a car, that's cool, beautiful. Well, it does not, but it drives like a transporter, like a bully, and that's even fun. I had so much fun driving this car with the steering wheel a little bit, f you know, more like a truck. And still, it is very handy. Driving in the city, parking, I was amazed how easy it is to park this car because, well, you have just the block that you move and so you can estimate the distances pretty easy and those big mirrors really help. Talking about comfort, it is a comf comfortable ride. You get some um, adaptive suspension, DCC, which does not have too much effect once you uh, have the 18 inch on. You rather go with smaller wheels to feel the real effect. Still, driving in comfort with the DCC, it is a comfortable ride and it's not too loud overall. Yes, you do hear the engine and some noises, but especially wind noises. We uh, had the chance to drive here 130 kilometers per hour and hardly had any wind noises, so it's even a silent runner pretty easy. And talking about daily use, man, you have so much space. If you have a bigger family, that's your car, I guess, because it's not only an MPV, it's rather a minibus, I guess. And if you take the long wheelbase, if you have a bigger family, like more than three kids, you might want to take the longer wheelbase. And then you have even space in the trunk for all, uh, maybe like a two week holiday. So, um, well, I have to criticize something, I guess. Um, they didn't change too much at the exterior, so comparing the T5 to the T6 from the outside, you don't see too many differences. But hey, if you have a good car, you know, you don't have to change so much. And so I say um, that's it from my side. If you have any questions or any add-ons, please let us know in the comments we're trying to answer. And um, if you like this clip, I really appreciate a thumbs up. And uh, you help us, if you like us, you help us with sharing our clips through your social networks like Twitter, Google Plus or Facebook, or even put the clip in your personal playlist. That's it from me, your host, Mr. Z. And I'm just saying goodbye. I hope to see you in our next clip. Bye bye.